followers and views don't matter. They, they really, really don't. Okay, well, actually they do, but not for the reasons that you think that they do. I have been working towards monetizing my channel and I'm looking to gain followers and I'm looking to get the required watch time hours in order to monetize. I do want those things. However, I know that those are vanity metrics and chasing getting views and chasing getting followers is not going to get me to the monetization that I'm looking for. Sure, someday I am going to monetize. I will get to a thousand followers in the 4,000 watch hours. I will get there, but I think the amount that I'm going to get dollar wise is still going to be very, very low unless I focus my efforts elsewhere. So in this video, I'm going to go over what I've learned and what I think I should be focusing on instead of the vanity metrics of views and followers. Now, I'm not an expert whatsoever in all social media platforms, but most social, I can say with a pretty good conviction that most social media platforms will have some kind of algorithm to determine which content to feed to the person consuming the content. And the algorithm is different for every platform. And some platforms have more than one algorithm. YouTube reportedly has two algorithms, at least, that I've heard of. I, I don't, again, I'm not an expert in YouTube, but I have heard that there's a recommendation algorithm where it would be similar to something like TikTok, where it knows what you like. So it will feed you more videos like that. And then there is also the search algorithm. What I'm understanding is in order to get my videos recommended to viewers that like videos, content, like the content that I'm placing is for YouTube to really understand what my videos are about. And this is like a multi-layered thing, very similar to other social media platforms like TikTok and Instagram, where the platform knows generally what your account is about, what your niche is basically, or what kinds of content that you post. This could possibly be based on your username, your keywords in your bio, your description, the overall content that you, that you add to the site. And then on each individual video or piece of content, it doesn't always have to be a video, it, like an Instagram, it could be a carousel or just some kind of static post. So again, I'm not an expert at any of this. I'm just kind of walking through my thoughts and how I think I'm going to be able to gain the views and the followers by getting recommended by YouTube and by showing up in the search results when people are looking for videos like mine. So th th I, I need to prime my account. I need to prime each video with the information so that YouTube can pick it up. And so my thoughts are, in order to get videos recommended, then I need to be very descriptive about what my videos are about. So I need to pick uh, a really descriptive title, lots of keywords. I need to use hashtags. I need to use lots of keywords in the description of the videos, maybe even hashtags in the videos. I can use tags, which tags are different than hashtags on YouTube. I can use the, um, the category drop down of what the video is about. Like I can pick how to in style, there's people in blogs, there's other little categories in there that kind of go with the video. And also the content that I'm speaking because YouTube is also taking what I'm saying and they're putting captions on it, right? So they know the transcript of what I'm saying and that also gets fed into the algorithm so that they know what this video is about. So the ways that I can improve my score on this, and I'm assuming there's a score, again, I'm not an expert, but I'm, in the way that I think I can improve my score is to dial all of those things in and then keep my video very specific so that I can get known for that item. Like I don't want to talk about fishing, creating content and Christmas presents in the same video. Like YouTube would have no idea where to show those videos to. So I'm talking about making this, the video make sense, all of the little topics I'm talking about. So from what I understand, this is directly related to my video showing up on someone's page to begin with. So like when you go to your YouTube home screen, like this is my home screen, it has to show up here. That's an impression. So it has to 
basically be shown to a person that's interested in the things that my video is about. So really that recommendation, that video recommendation is really, really key. Uh, and then also if the person types something in the search and then your item comes up in their search, um, very, very important as well. So then the next thing is for them to look and see, you know, my thumbnail and the title of my video, because those are the two things that show up here is in, in someone's feed to see if there's something that they want to click through. So that click through to watch the video. So the, it has to be intriguing enough. It has to give a sense of confidence that, th that when they're going to watch my video, they're going to get what they're looking for. So first YouTube had to serve up the content for them to even see it. Like, and then I have to make them notice it, you know, make it eye catching, make it interesting. And then I have to get them the confidence to click on it and what, you know, an intend to watch the video, right? So that's going to be through the thumbnails and through the title, like I said. And then the next thing that I'm going to be focusing on is the average view duration of my video. So I have a low view duration. I'm actually not really sure. So this video on my screen, I just uploaded this video. Average view duration of this video is very low. See how it's got a little down arrow right here? 21 seconds. That's not very good. It just got uploaded though earlier today, so maybe it will be better. Impressions click-through rates really, really low. So we'll, we'll see about that one. Let's go to a different video that actually has a better, um, for some reason, this one did really well, this bodysuit one. So let me look at that one. Got 1,700 views, watch hours, subscribers. Let's look at the reach. 52,000 impressions. So that means it showed up 52,000 times on someone's screen. I believe that also can be multiple times for the same person, but I'm not 100% sure. If you're into like website analytics, or, you know, like Google Analytics or something of that kind, this is should be pretty similar to that. I don't know if that it's 100%. So this is the total, like if you hover over the things, it, it tells you. This is the total number of times your video thumbnail has was shown to viewers since this video was was published. And you can click here and, to learn more and it looks like it drops down and gives you more information. Uh, impressions click-through rate. This is views per impressions shown. So this measures how often viewers watched a video after seeing an impression. So this is how many times they clicked through it. Is it low or high? Um, so yeah, and then where was I going? Oh, down here, I think. Is this it? No, it would be under engagement. Under engagement would be average view duration. Here it is. So here is how many people are still watching it after so many days and time. Okay, so this is days, 30 days. So I'm learning here. <laughs> I'm definitely learning here. So these are days across the bottom and then these are the amount of time. So I can look at the certain days to see, um, you know, how much longer people are watching it. I want to see the one where they drop off, where, here we go. I think this is what I'm looking for. This is retention. So retention is where, is, is another thing. Let me write this down, actually. Is where we can tell when somebody is dropping off, right? This is a really steep, steep <laughs> decline. 19% of viewers are still watching around the 30 second mark, which is below typical. So we want to figure out how to get more of the people watching it um, for longer. And then we want to watch, have at least 50% of the people watching it. And this is something that I heard on someone else's video. You want at least 50% of the people watching your video, I guess, all the way through, something like that. I need to research that more. So yeah, this is really, really kind of technical and it, it's going to be different for everyone. It's not going to be super straightforward to figure this out. So here's what I've learned just by walking through all of this little tiny little bit of research. That I'm not going to get any views unless 
YouTube understands what my video is about. So that means I need to make sure I'm hitting all of the points that I need to make and I'm using keywords to describe what I'm talking about. I need to take out filler words like very and awesome and um, <laughs> like things that really don't describe anything. I need to be much more descriptive about the content that I'm creating, about what I'm talking about, see see what I'm talking about. So that that's just, that's very vague. So that's, that's what I'm work, I need to work on. I need to work on that. I need to work on my titles, nailing my title, nailing my thumbnails. The titles and the thumbnails do not have to match like word for word. You don't usually, you don't put the same words on your titles as your thumbnails. I mean, you can put like a keyword, but you like, you don't like make your thumbnails with a bunch of words. So just for example, let me go back to my main YouTube page here. And just kind of look at what people have here. Like this guy right here, this is a great example. So he's got that, that bright yellow text and he's wearing a green sweater. So it really pops. And then on the left, he has a little graphic of his subscribers. And on the right, he has graph, you know, his screenshot of views. And then look at the title. What actually happens when you blow up on YouTube and what to avoid? Where's that icon? Oh, that's YouTube Studio. Okay. So he's saying delete it. I don't know why. Why would you want to delete YouTube Studio? So, you know, that to me right there, I would click on that because I'd be like, wait a minute, YouTube Studio is a great tool. Why would I want to delete it? I need to know <laughs> why I want to delete it. So that would be a great, great example of being hooked. I am literally hooked right now and I want to watch that video. Um, so let's kind of scroll down and see what else kind of pops out at me. Um, I don't know. Consistency is not enough. Avoid these three mistakes if you want to grow fast on YouTube. Eh, I don't know. This one's interesting right here. She's got a nice screenshot of a lot of money and it says TikTok shop affiliate total estimated reward to date view balance. 165000 in less than a month with TikTok shop affiliate. So, you know, I might want to click on that and see how the heck did that person earn that. So that's kind of what I'm trying to say is, you know, the the thumbnail should be kind of like eye catching. Like, what is that? It's gonna you're scrolling, right? You're you're scrolling through here and you want to catch someone's eye. Like this one was really eye catching because I just happen to love those colors and that big red subscribe button. I mean, red makes you stop, right? So that's that. And then they used four hidden, so hidden is capital letters, YouTube features that will double your subscribers. Very good keywords. Hidden is like an emotional uh, triggering word, right? YouTube is a keyword. A feature is a keyword. Double is a quantifier, I guess. Uh, subscribers is a keyword. So just, yeah. So that's what I'm going to be focused on. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to look at my analytics in my YouTube studio and see if what I'm doing works. And obviously if I'm seeing, you know, up arrows, I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing. And if I continue seeing down arrows, I'm going to have to look at my content again and say, okay, what else am I missing? That's my take on how this whole thing works. Don't know if I'm right. Don't know if I'm wrong. I think I'm right. I think, I think I'm getting it. I think I'm understanding. And I think, oh, I forgot to say this because this just popped in my mind too. Playlists also. You can organize your videos into playlists, you know, similar or subjects that build upon build upon each other's like like a series of videos, right? And your playlist can have keywords in it too. So it's like another stack of keywords to identify your video and tell YouTube what the heck you're talking about so that the people that are interested in whatever the heck that is it will show up on their page and be recommended to them.